What's up, everybody? Supreme Decisions here, and today I want to talk to you about something. It's procedural due process. I'm going to speak to, or actually refer you to the case that actually establishes, establishes this must be something that is given to you, simply because you are being charged, because everyone has the right to a defense. And in that, if it is done correctly, you are required to be put in a light for the most part. Well, the case is Matthews v. Eldridge, 424 U.S. 319, and it's a 1976 case. Now, this is a precedence case. This is the one where all your other cases that have come after it falls under because it held Procedural due process must be evaluated by limiting procedural brownies and the risk of erroneous curtailing individuals' interests under the existing procedures, as well as much additional procedures would have reduced the risk of error. This comes in a time where we talk about things such as racial profiling. We look at the FBI reports that state a police officer, when making a decision, is generally based on non-criminal acts. So which means they're making a mistake three out of every four arrests they make. And then you have that police officer, which is generally your first encounter, giving you to a prosecutor who is cherry picking cases because they're using the cases that is most advantageous of getting a conviction. But when doing that, they limit access because they'll have a defense attorney. Yeah, I, I pause for dramatic effect because most of them will not do a detailed discovery or even understand or know what that is, even though they've gone to law school. And you don't have a vigorous defense. But once you ask for something, it is always there. That is always a basis of making sure that you have an opportunity to not only remain innocent and force the accused to prove their case, but you also have a crux of defending yourself later. Because as we've seen in the Georgia um, statutes, if you don't ask initially, if it's not asked in a detailed discovery, it is not requested properly, you can never bring it up later. This goes down for those that are in the 65 percentile that are coming off death row for wrongful convictions. Because if you always look at it, the majority of those cases, that 65 percent that are being freed, comes down to ineffective assistance of counsel. Their defense attorney was not properly going out. And even with me doing the Supreme Brady list, it goes to the effect of understanding that the prosecutor can now be held liable because now those records that they're trying to hide and seal and making sure people don't have access to, such as the police officer who's your first encounter. But we're now putting not only that police report, but we're putting that police officer's character into question because if they're being disciplined for not following procedures, you know, of the police department. That also is a mark of character flaws whenever they are looking to charge someone based on that officer's testimony. So part of the procedural due process is making sure you're doing a proper request. And what offers you that request is Matthews v. Eldridge. So keep that in mind. And if you like this video, hit a thumbs up. Also, hit that thanks button. Make sure you keep supporting the channel. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. And don't forget, on all your major podcasting platforms, Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. If you want to just learn law or if you actually just enjoy podcasts, check your boy out. And Supreme, I'm out.